For the moment, we're going to go for the FPS starter project. So you'll see on this page, it says that you need to run the dependencies and build the engine before you do this. You've already done that, so click to set up. It says you need to sign up or log in. You've already done that. So we'll jump to step two, clone the example project repository. We're gonna use the command line as we did previously. I'm using PowerShell. Again, I'm going to clone this into C Unreal. Now that that's done, we need to clone the GDK into our project. So to do that, we want to go to the example project and then create a new folder called plugins. That should be in the game folder. So you've got Unreal GDK example project slash game slash plugins. And in here, we want to clone the GDK. So I'm going to change directory to the plugins folder and run this git clone command. Similar to the Unreal Engine fork itself, you need to run some setup scripts. So we're going to run setup.bat. Once it's done, it'll say press any key to continue. Then we're going to navigate to Unreal Example Project Game. Having run setup.bat, this U project will now be here. We're going to right click, switch Unreal Engine version, and make sure that it's pointing to the Unreal Engine fork that we cloned and built earlier. It says here that we need to generate the Visual Studio project files. Uh, we've actually already just done that, but just to be sure, let's run that step. Now we need to open up the GDK Shooter solution. Right click on the GDK Shooter and build. Okay, our build is complete. Next up, we want to right click on the GDK shooter and set it as our startup project. Next, we want to click this local Windows debugger. This will actually launch the project in our built out Unreal Engine 4 fork. So this should open the Unreal Engine 4 editor in a moment. Okay, now that the Unreal 4 editor is open, we can jump back to the docs and move on to launch a local deployment, step two. Okay, in step two, we're going to launch a local deployment. Doing this should teach you the local development workflow for the GDK. At the top of this document, there's some explanation about what schema is, what a spatial OS entity is, what a snapshot is, and some other terminology. You can read through that if you want, but I'm gonna skip over it to demonstrate the good part. First of all, we need to generate schema. To do this, you go to schema, hit the drop down, and do full scan. This scans your whole project and generates schema. Next up, you need to take a snapshot of your game world. To do this, hit the snapshot button. Next up, Hit start to kick off Spatial OS. This will open a command line window. So, and the Spatial OS runtime will start running in the background.
You can see here it's downloaded some updates just before it's kicked off. You can tell it's ready when it says Spatial OS ready. I'm going to minimize this to keep it out of the way. Next up, we need to use the play drop down menu to tell the Unreal Editor what we want to launch. We're going to launch uh, clients in new editor windows, Pi, which means play an editor. This just means that they'll pop in different windows, which makes them easier to drag around your desktop when you're testing multiple clients. We're going to tell it to run two clients and one Spatial OS server worker. So let's do that now. This becomes two. This stays as one. We click New Editor Window. This has opened two clients. You can see it's getting a bit cramped on my screen. So you want to type in your name and hit Start, and you've spawned into the game world. I'm going to Alt Tab to my other client, choose a different color. Now we've spawned into the game world. It's fairly big, so we might not be able to find each other for this demo, but you can see, oh, there I am. You can run, aim, shoot, jump, switch weapons. It's a pretty fully featured first person shooter. While we're here, I can also show you the local inspector which you can see running in a tab in your browser. And there are quite a lot of entities. But let's see, if I start running around and I position these windows correctly, you should hopefully be able to see as I move, my player entity moves. This should give you an idea of how the Spatial OS runtime is separate from the server and the clients and is keeping track of the game state. So this is fun, but it's a lot more fun to deploy this game online and play with our friends. So let's do that now. I've hit escape to close the clients. I'm going to close the inspector tab. I'm going to hit stop here, which will stop the Spatial OS runtime. And now we can return to the docs. You can see I've hit stop. And we're going to jump to the next step, launch a cloud deployment.